Uh, thanks for inviting me. It's a very great honour. I knew Mrs D very well because she was my boss for several years. Um, I was a community worker in Manchester for nearly 40 years. And I guess one of my achievements was that one of my ambitions was always to go and live in East Africa. And I actually achieved that by going for eight years mm -hmm. to Kenya and to Ethiopia, where I worked for women's rights organisations. And a lot of that work was actually influenced by what I learned from Mrs D, as we always called her, mm -hmm. particularly in terms of women's leadership, gender violence, those kind of issues. Mm -hmm. So I guess my achievement was that I went there I did what I wanted to do. I would still be there if I could get a work permit. I'd go back tomorrow. Okay. Um, and I worked for various organisations there. I worked for, in Ethiopia for a year, okay. and then I worked for several women's rights organisations in Kenya. And I'm on the board of one of those organisations now. Okay. Um, I've also recently been doing some freelancing work, <coughs> excuse me, some freelancing work, writing funding applications for some theatre groups mm -hmm. in Kenya. I was mainly based with women's rights organisations. Mm -hmm. One is called Sauti Wanawake, okay. which means Voices of Women. So Women of the Soil would be yeah. um, Wanawake Adi. Oh, women yeah. of the Soil, Wanawake Adi. Yeah. Yeah. So I was working with women's rights organisations, so mostly that was like capacity building work, mm -hmm. helping with organisational development, yeah. doing some management training. Basically, I would do what anybody asked me, you know, I had to be very flexible. I was a technical advisor mm -hmm. or a volunteer, but I got like a local wage with, with voluntary service overseas. I went with originally yeah. and I went for six months, but I ended up staying for eight so, years, yes, yes. <laughs> eight years actually. Yeah. A lot of the work I did in the Women's Action Forum, I think it consolidated my interest in women's issues yeah. and in terms of education and women's leadership. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, I was managing the project so I learned a lot about fundraising, I learned a lot about project development, staff management. So by working hands-on in that way and having that opportunity, mm -hmm. I was then able to take that yeah. to Kenya and use that in that kind of work. Because yeah. I'd be asked anything. I mean, at one point, I even ended up writing speeches for Kenyan women MPs. Okay. I don't know if you knew I was doing it, but... Oh, <laughs> yes. A variety, but obviously yes, a real variety. Yeah. It might be organising a women's football tournament, an HIV project. Mm -hmm. It could be doing things for 16 days of activism, or we might do things out in the community, forums around the constitution of Kenya, yeah. because it was very, they're very good on civic education there. Mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's one of the things I wanted to bring back, because I think when I came back, I found it challenging that people felt yeah. very, that's been one of the biggest trends. It wasn't a trans difficult transitioning to go to Africa, mm. but coming back here mm -hmm. has been a huge challenge to me. I, I like the activism mm -hmm. that's it's still there. People are very fresh and really wanting to make big changes. Mm -hmm. And I like the aspect of community development there. It's very hands-on yeah. and the enthusiasm, particularly with the youth who are incredibly well-informed, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like people have lost their fire here a bit. It's something yes. I'd like to see coming back. I feel like people have been squashed into a box and mm -hmm. losing rights very fast, which is quite sad for me to see, you know, having been in this field for 40 odd years yeah. and so seeing see people are feeling, being silenced yeah. and the racism and xenophobia that I saw when I first moved to Manchester, mm -hmm. that people have worked so hard. I see it kind of creeping back. Creeping and, back creeping back and I see that go globally really. Mm. Yeah. Well I feel that people have become much more constrained mm. by statutory obligations mm. which you know some of them I understand for example if it's safeguarding around children I, I get all the paperwork you need for those yeah. issues mm -hmm. but I also feel people have haven't got the freedom that we used to have to set things up yeah, and develop to express, it, to well. express. Yeah. and you know obviously fun Funding is a huge challenge because the money just isn't there mm. for people's projects mm. and people are scrabbling around for that all the time. Mm. So I think that's been another major constraint. But I think people have almost given up yeah. speaking out, apart from a few people we, like we've mentioned before. Mm. Um, I think people maybe feel scared to speak out because yeah. how they'll be branded I think the fire is still very, very much there, mm -hmm. although, of course, people are still 
a little careful what they might say, yeah. but people will go out and they will do work for nothing and they'll be out in the community, mm -hmm. you know, volunteering. People have a very negative attitude towards Africa here, I found, in, in general. Mm -hmm. You know, they, all they, they think it's just nothing but famine, drought, mm -hmm. poverty. They don't realise that it's actually, you know, parts of Africa are extremely developed. Mm -hmm. um, for example, Kenya has an amazing phone system where you pay all your bills by phone. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been in, on that kind of technology for many, many years yeah. ahead of us. Yeah. And the activism and the kind of community groups that are there and the cars that you'll see there. You know, people don't realise that they have this very... Well, what we're fed by the media, yes, basically. Mm -hmm. And it's actually quite yeah. negative. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the level of education people have mm -hmm. and how well-informed people are. You know, really staggered me. I used to travel on local transport and that's where I learned a lot mm. because even those young guys working on the matatus as they call them there, you know, you can have a fantastic political conversation yeah. with people. But I find that quite difficult here. Mm. You know, because people, people are not as skilled up about their political They're not. People have lost rights. have lost their, their their knowledge of their rights. Uh, there was something you mentioned at one point about ways forward with this. And I was thinking some mentorship might be really, really good, you know, for, for the women who've been involved in this, if we could offer to do that. And even some bursaries, if the money could be raised for women going into higher education, because I've realised how very, very expensive that is now. And it's another way that working class women are being excluded from having an education. So those are sort of practical things, if there's a way forward with something like that. And women getting together to thrash out the issues themselves and see other ways forward. Because as I said, I think we've, we've kind of gone a bit backwards. We've lost that impetus. And for younger women to be involved, to be honest, because they're the future. And those younger women that I do know are involved, you know, are very vibrant and powerhouses in their own right. And I think they're, they're the ones that need encouraging and nurturing now, really. My role at the Women's Action Forum, Mrs D was my manager and there were other women on the management committee like Jeanette Stanley who was also a great inspiration to me. Um, Mrs D was a very disciplined woman and I learnt a lot about discipline from Mrs D uh, which I think I, could, I took inspiration from and I could take forward into my own work and because I was the manager of the Women's Action Forum I learnt a lot of things on the job basically like fundraising, like managing staff, like setting up projects, like um, developing partnerships, that's very important, and having that confidence to do it really. And you know, Mrs D would always be there checking I was doing it as well. From what I learned on the job there, I was about three years. Mm -hmm. I was then able to go on. I got a job at the council where I worked for four years. I was managing a very large project called the Healthy Living Network. Mm -hmm. But it was because of the work. That I, it's because of what I learned there. I mean, I'd had other roles, obviously. Mm -hmm. I worked at the Immigration Aid Unit. I was a trainer there on human rights. So I've had lots of other things that I've done. But I think it was having that autonomy at the Women's Action Forum that I didn't even realise at the time what confidence it had given me and what I'd learned. You know, it's only in hindsight that you look back and you think what I learned from this person and maybe I didn't even appreciate it always at the time, you know, just that leadership yes. and the courage that a person had, a woman of her time to be that and to set those things up because she was involved in so many things. Mm. Uh, Mrs D was a very classy lady uh, I don't know about Demure. I suppose, yeah, she was very respectable in the way she dressed and the way she, she came over and the way she dealt with people. And I think she commanded respect because of that, actually. Um, what I also noticed was that she, she would see what was going on in the community and she wouldn't just see it, she would act on it. And I learnt a lot from her about that. You know, the things around school exclusions, I didn't know anything about those issues really until I met Mrs D. And she would respond to that, so she would set up projects to address that. And there was a point when people were evacuated from Montserrat. And it was really Mrs D who was a forerunner on that. And we were busy with other projects, and Mrs D came in and said, Right, there's all these people coming from Montserrat, we've got to respond. And I remember thinking, oh no, <laughs> this is more work. But she was right because nobody else actually was helping those women. 
and she responded to that by getting funds. She got the governor of Montserrat to come to the organisation. She got welfare rights to come in. Another woman, Jackie Bailey, who I used to work with as another activist, very prominent woman here. She responded, she helped set up the Montserrat Community Development Trust, but that was all down to Mrs D, really. And I learned that responsiveness from her, because for me it was like, well, we're doing this, this is our agenda, we're doing this, this and this. But she said, no, we're going to take this on as well. And at one point, we had the office was full of duvets, and we had a fund, and we had things to give out. And I was groaning, actually, but she was right. Yeah. And it was a kind of her kind-heartedness when I look back. You know, I was thinking, no, we've got a strategic plan. This isn't in our strategic plan. But she saw the need and she responded to it. And because of her, those people got houses. Their children got back into school after being excluded. They set up a trust. So, yeah, she was very, very personable. And she could mix with people down there, so-called, and right up to top level. Mm -hmm. yeah, every, 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 that really takes a skill. I was, I was talking to um, another colleague who took over the Women's Action Forum actually after I left, a woman called Livia, and we were saying what a shame it is actually that the Women's Action Forum, that building has been lying fallow mm. for all of those years because it's a very good resource, it's a beautiful building. It's a, it'd be so great to see somewhere like that being turned over as a centre to those young women activists to take hold of and shape into something. Because I don't think people have a base for a start that I know of. I could be wrong about that. And as I mentioned before, something around mentorship, perhaps, for those women to, to come forward now and take up the mantle and do that kind of leadership work. Mm -hmm. What was happening 30 years ago is different now. But, you know, the increasing xenophobia and racism we talked about, I think something definitely needs to be... Some people need to come forward and act on that and speak up because it's like, to me, people are being silenced, really, in this country. And I think part of it is that people are scared to speak in case even they're associated with so-called terrorism or whatever it is. I think people are very wary now of actually speaking up. And resources, yeah, definitely. And funding, you know, it's very, very difficult to find funding. And people, you spend so much time trying to do that that you don't actually have time to do your job and that was an issue when I worked here before, and from what I've seen coming back, that's actually got worse. I think it'd be really great to like, identify new women of the soil, and we mentioned a couple before, and bring them in to take some of that work forward. And as I said, you know, if there's some way of raising funds for bursaries for women so they can actually afford to go into higher education or train as lawyers, I know to work around that at the moment, but those kind of things, because actually what people need is money to do things, yeah. and a lot of us just don't have that. You know, I would love to do a master's degree, but when I looked at the cost of it, I just thought, no. Mm. But for younger women who want to move forward, and even, you know, if we could arrange trips to take people to Africa or to the Caribbean and do some exchange work, because mm. I think one of the things I found when I came back here is that Britain is quite insular. And I hadn't really realised living here, but working in Kenya, for example, they know such, so much more about what's going on internationally and they see their work in an international context. Mm -hmm. Even writing funding applications, for example, or knowing about the new sustainable development goals, those things will be referenced there and people know how does it might be that they're working towards an international platform but I felt that here that's not so prominent. So I, if I could do something, I would like to do that, maybe run workshops on that and look at that more international agenda. And then some of our young women can move forward into that kind of work and maybe do work in Africa themselves mm -hmm. or wherever it is they want. It could be China, it could be anywhere. Yeah, we're global now. Global. We're global, yeah. And I feel like that is something I suppose I've noticed mm -hmm. okay. that isn't seen here as much. You know, that's opened my eyes being away. Coming back to more community level, I think that sort of doing things that can help empower young women to take things forward, and young men obviously, you know, not just, we're not just talking about women here, but as women of the soil, I think, yeah. 
Yeah, there's a lot more support needed for, for young women and men coming up now, I think. And I think it's harder for them now in lots of ways, actually. I think there's more constraints and there's more fears, really. I think people have been, as I mentioned before, I think people are being silenced slowly, slowly by the kind of system that we're living in. And that's my view, that that's what I see coming back here, really. Amazing. Everything's becoming more and more regulated. You know, we, you know, we'll be, we'll be chipped soon, won't we? Really, you know, that's that's how I see things going. That we are becoming, our freedoms are being eroded, even in terms of trade unions and rights and how we work now, and people aren't questioning it. I feel like people are just giving up a little bit, sadly. Even though people are being silenced in one way, people are much more conscious. So I do feel positive on that level because I think people are waking up and they're seeing what's going on in the world and they realise that actually, you know, there's a very few people pulling the strings and a very few global conglomerates pulling the strings. And not even our governments are actually in control anymore. There's things beyond that. And I think people are seeing that because of social media and that global consciousness that people have and that activism. So that, that really is, yeah, I feel very positive about that because even though I think we're being dumbed down in one way, I think people are also waking up in another. Yeah. Yeah.